Okay, uh, one more comment about example one before we do our last problem. Uh, if we'd look real carefully when we'd substitute in that 1.1, we would have noticed the series would have been an alternating series. Uh, you can see that even in your Taylor polynomial, substituting in 1.1. That actually means we could get away with using the alternating series estimation theorem. However, they did ask us to use the Lagrange error bound. And even on the AP exam, you might be asked specifically to use that. So that, that very well could be required of you. Let's very quickly look at example two. Uh, use a Taylor polynomial of degree two to approximate cosine of 61 degrees and estimate the accuracy of the approximation. Uh, really, we would like to be centered around something very close to 61 degrees. Here we weren't given specific information about what uh, the center was, but we're going to let C, the center of our polynomial, uh, be close, uh, or actually be 60 degrees, which of course in radians is pi over 3. Again, the closer we are to our center, the less error we're going to have. And uh, we've seen that in class as we've looked on the calculator and looked at how our polynomials are very close to our function uh, around our center. And as we move away from the center, more error, of course, is going to occur. But uh, that also then would lead us to notice that, well, 61 degrees, that's one degree greater than 60 degrees. One quick comment is one degree, if we were to uh, actually uh, make this into radians, convert this into radians, uh, we'd use the unit conversion of pi radians for every 180 degree. We would realize that one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. So that's what one degree is actually equal to. We're going to use that as we work out uh, this approximation. But thank goodness it's a smaller degree. Uh, so uh, let's see what we have here. We have f of x, of course, is equal to the cosine of x. And uh, f of pi over 3, well, the cosine of pi over 3, of course, is 1 half. So uh, from here we can very, ah, I keep doing that, sorry about that, let's bring this up here. f prime of x, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x, or the opposite sine of x, we should say. f prime of pi over 3 uh, would actually be a negative root 3 over 2. As we continue on, let's take a second derivative. The derivative of opposite sine is opposite cosine of x. And as we substitute in pi over 3, we would have the opposite of a half. Now again, quick comment. It's true that we only have to go out to a second degree polynomial. However, because of the Lagrange error bound, we're going to go one derivative further. Uh, the derivative of the opposite of cosine is the sine of x. And uh, we could even jump ahead and say, look, we know we're going to actually substitute in a z at some point. Uh, not pi over 3, but uh, a z. And uh, at this point, hopefully we're prepared to write out a second degree Taylor polynomial. The second degree Taylor polynomial is going to be centered at, of course, pi over 3, f of pi over 3 plus the first derivative evaluated at pi over 3 times x minus pi over 3 to the first power divided by 1 factorial uh, plus the second derivative evaluated at pi over 3 times x minus pi over 3 uh, to the second power divided by 2 factorial we all know 2 factorial is actually just a 2. Well, cleaning this up a little bit, we just saw that f of pi over 3 on that little chart on the left is a half. 
Uh, the derivative of uh, f at pi over 3 is going to be a negative root 3 over 2 times our x minus pi over 3. Of course, that's to the 1 power divided by a 1. But then the second derivative is actually going to be a negative 1 half. And that's a negative 1 half x minus oops, pi over 3, pardon me, uh, to the second power all over 2 factorial. And if you really want to clean it up a step further, we certainly may. Uh, because dividing 1 half by 2, of course, we could see very, very quickly is just going to be 1 fourth. Uh, but you're going to notice that we have two consecutive negative coefficients. Uh, they're not alternating between positives and negatives. Of course, what really matters is what happens when we plug in our specific x value. Uh, but that's our second degree Taylor polynomial centered at uh, pi over 3. We can work out exactly what our estimate is in just a moment. But we could very quickly then write out what our uh, Taylor polynomial error would be with the Lagrange error bound. We know that that has to be the third derivative evaluated at z, and this would be x minus pi over 3 to that third power divided by 3 factorial. Now specifically, we know that 61 degrees 61 degrees is actually going to be just a little bit bigger than pi over 3. And in fact, look up here at the top of the screen. 61 degrees is going to be pi over 3, 60 degrees, plus 1 degree extra. I don't even have to get a common denominator to work that out. I could substitute in pi over 3 plus pi over 180 and, and see that that can be very, very helpful. But why am I working this out specifically? Well, we know that z is always between the x value that we are approximating and uh, what we actually uh, have for our center. So z is bigger than pi over 3 but it's going to be less than pi over 3 plus pi over 180 degrees. And if we wanted to envision this as degrees, of course, at, instead of radians, we'd have 60 degrees and 61 degrees. In radians, of course, we have this. Z, of course, is unknown. We never know exactly what z is. We just know that z is some x value between pi over 3 and pi over 3 plus pi over 180. It's between 60 degrees and 61 degrees. But we will choose uh, that uh, z value to maximize our error. By the way, as we're looking at this Lagrange error bound, of course, we know that this is really the sine of z times x minus pi over 3 to the third all over 3 factorial. So here is just our abstract, but we'd like to go a step further and say, well, what exactly are we getting for our approximation? So p sub 2 of x, let's plug in our 61 degrees, but again, Let's be smart and write it as this other form that we just mentioned. Pi over 3 plus pi over 180. Hopefully you can see why this form can be so incredibly helpful. Look, as I'm substituting in pi over 3 plus pi over 180, I hope you're going to notice that the pi over 3's are going to cancel out. And that's going to be so especially helpful as we work this out on the calculator. See, look at this. This pi over 3 and this negative pi over 3, they're all going to go away. So if we were to type all of this into our calculator, we would see that we'd get about 0 0.4848.
you know, if we were only going to three decimal place accuracy, we'd say 0.485 or 0.484. So that's a pretty good estimate for uh, this evaluation. Remember, we're trying to estimate cosine of 61 degrees. We'd say it's probably pretty close to that. That's pretty close to a half, which is what cosine of 60 degrees is. But you might wonder, well, how much error do we have? Let's talk error right now. And uh, that is plugging in pi over 3 plus pi over 180 into the Lagrange error bound. Well, again, we've got sine of z. And we're going to choose a z value that will maximize our error. Again, z is between, if I may jump back to just degrees. Of course, degrees and radians, we can have some equivalents. We know that z is somewhere between 60 and 61 degrees. So you might wonder, well, you know, which of those two shall I choose so that we could make this error as large as possible. And we're going to think of this in absolute value, of course, uh, although in this regard it's positive even without the absolute value. Look, on the unit circle, we know that 60 degrees would be over here. I'm really going to exaggerate and say 61 degrees is you know, over here. Obviously, 61 is so incredibly close. But on the unit circle, sine was always the y-coordinate. And we could see then that the sine of 61 degrees must be larger than the sine of 60. So we're going to choose z to equal 61 degrees. So what's our error in absolute value? Our error is going to be the sine of this 61 degrees. Now look, the pi over 3's are going to cancel out. And uh, again, you could type in, you could even change your mode right now to uh, degrees if you'd like to. That might help you out a little bit. 3 factorial is just a 6. So our error is going to have to be less than what we have here, which is 7.749 times 10 to the negative 7. This is our error bound. We know that our error is less than that. Uh, so actually, sadly, we're not going to even have six decimal place accuracy. We just missed that. We'd have actually five decimal place accuracy. But this is what our error is. And you can see that's actually very good. We're actually uh, making a great approximation for the cosine of 61 degrees. Notice we were only using a second degree polynomial. Okay, well, this takes a lot of practice. Uh, hope that uh, you can look this over again and continue working at it, and we'll get better and better. Best of luck to you.